Hi, my name is Reese, and today I'm going to be doing my abdominal assessment, assessment on my patient, Nico. So before I start, I'm going to ask 10 questions. I'm going to ask if this patient has experienced any abdominal pain. I'm going to ask if he's had any nausea, uh, nausea or vomiting. I'm going to see how his appetite has been. I'm going to ask if he's had any difficulty swallowing. I'm going to see if he has any food intolerances. I'm going to see what the frequency of his bowel movements is. I'm going to see if he has any GI past medical history. I'm going to see if he has any prescription medications as well as his uh, food intake within the last 24 hours as well as his water intake. So before I start my assessment, I am going to, uh, to talk to him about consent for all of the assessments I So the first assessment I'm going to be doing on my patient is inspection. So I'm going to be looking at his abdomen, looking for any bruising, uh, distension, or pulsating uh, masses that may indicate a AAA. And I'm just making sure that it's all equal in all quadrants. So if it's okay with you, Nico, I'm just going to have a look at your uh, abdomen for those things that I just discussed. Yep. So I would get my patient to lift his shirt and I'm going to check, making sure it's symmetrical, there's no bruising and all of those things. The next assessment I'm going to go into is going to be auscultation. So Nico, for this procedure, what I'm going to do is I'm going to listen to all nine quadrants of your abdomen, just making sure that you have proper bowel sounds in all nine quadrants. Uh, so an abnormal finding would be me not being able to hear anything. Uh, and so if I don't hear anything within the first 10 seconds, then I will listen for up to five minutes uh, to make sure that there are bowel sounds. And after five minutes, then that's when I can conclude that there is no bowel sounds. So for the sake of the video, I am going to speed this up. The next part of my assessment that I want to get into is percussion. So the reason I'm doing this is I'm looking uh, to see if there's any fluid buildup in the abdomen. I'm also trying to estimate the size of the liver and the spleen. Um, so Nico, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my fingers and I'm going to tap along your abdomen like this. Uh, it shouldn't be painful at all. Um, and you have the right to refuse this assessment at any point. If you do not want to do it, just let me know if there's any pain, okay? Okay. And the reason I'm wanting to do this is just to see and estimate the size of your liver and see if it's enlarged at all or if there's any fluid buildup in your abdomen. Sure. So I'm going to percuss all nine quadrants. And how I'm able to know when the liver uh, borders and where they are is when the sound changes from resonant to dull. So first to get the uh, superior border is I'm gonna start up here and I'm gonna percuss down. Now that I've heard the change, I'm just gonna get you to hold your hand right there. Now I'm gonna start from the bottom. All right, and now I'm going to compare the two points and make sure that there's around 10 to, tw 10 to 12 centimeters between the two. Anything larger would indicate that there would be inflammation. Next for the spleen, I'm going to start on the right bottom side and I'm going to go up at an angle to the left upper quadrant until I hear that change. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my patient to put his hand in the middle of his abdomen and I'm going to be checking for ascites. So what I'm doing is I'm holding pressure here and I'm going to be applying pressure on this side and feeling to see if there is, um, if I can feel the vibration in this hand which would indicate fluid in your abdomen. Is it okay if I do that exam on you? Sure. And there shouldn't be any pain with this assessment that I predict, uh, but it would be a uh, helpful assessment to uh, prove my working diagnosis and just rule out any of these causes. And I don't feel any vibration. So next I'm just going to percuss starting from the middle all the way to the outside. Again, just listening for that fluid. All right, and the last part of my assessment is going to be palpation. So I'm going to do this in two rounds, and what this is going to consist of is me applying pressure to your abdomen uh, to see if, see if there's any pain uh, and see if your abdomen is tender. So there might be a little bit of pain with this, and I apologize for that, but you can tell, tell me to stop at any point, and I can discontinue. Is it okay if I do this assessment on you? I think it would be valuable for me to prove my uh, working diagnosis. Sure. Okay. So I'm gonna start in the left lower quadrant uh, just because his pain is in the upper quadrants and so we're gonna start where it is less painful. Any pain there? No. 
And on this side? No. And up here? No. And up here? Yes. Okay. So is it okay if I go again and try and do it a little bit harder for my second round just to see if there's any really true underlying issues? Sure. Okay. So this time I'm going to do it a little bit harder. Any pain there? No. Any pain there? No. Any pain there? Yes. Any pain there? And how would you describe that pain? It's it's just a sh uh, like a burning. So for the next part of my assessment, I'm going into my specialized tests. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to ask a few more questions. I'm going to ask this patient is if he has a history of gallstones. I'm going to see if there's any pain uh, with relief of the tripod position. And I'm going to see how many times he's vomited. And he's already told me that there has been no blood in his emesis. Uh, this patient also mentioned a history of diverticulitis. So I want to know if this feels like a normal flare up of that diverticulitis. The first assessment I'm going to go into next is going to be my Murphy's sign. So what this uh, test is for is I'm going to do it in order to rule out cholecystitis. So what this uh, test entails is I'm going to apply pressure um, right below the uh, intercostal margin in the up right upper quadrant. I'm going to be applying pressure towards the uh, gallbladder and I'm going to take, get my patient to take a deep breath in. So when he takes that breath in, I'm going to be watching his face to see if there's any pain on inspiration. The pain on inspiration would be caused uh, by the my hands pushing against the inflamed gallbladder. A normal finding would be there being no pain on inspiration. Uh, so again, for this assessment, I've already explained it to you. Uh, the risks of this is that there could be some pain, uh, but hopefully not. I just want you to let me know if there is. Again, this is a voluntary uh, assessment. You do not have to do it, but I do think it would be beneficial in order to work towards my leading diagnosis. Again, I'll keep everything confidential. Do you have any questions at all? No. Okay, and you may take away consent at any point in this assessment. So I'm going to apply pressure and I'm gonna get you to take a deep breath in and out. So due to this patient uh, not ha having any pain on inspiration, I'm going to say that it is a negative Murphy's sign. Okay. So for my second specialized test, I'm going to be performing the Blumberg sign. So what this is doing is it's checking for any uh, peritonitis or peritoneal bleeding by checking for rebound tenderness. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna apply pressure uh, to one of the quadrants. And when I release that pressure, a positive sign would be him having an increase in pain. A negative finding would be no increase in pain when I remove that pressure. So due to me uh, applying pressure to your abdomen, this may cause some increase in pain. Although I do think this would be a beneficial uh, assessment to perform just to rule out any uh, peritoneal bleeding. As I do see that colon sign, I do think you have abdominal bleeding and a negative sign would further enforce uh, my diagnosis of um, a pan a pancreatitis. So if, if that's okay, I'm going to begin my assessment on you and you may remove consent at any point. Okay. And I also am going to document that he told me that and I'm also going to give any time for questions as well as him to fully understand the procedure. So I'm going to apply pressure and then as I release the pressure, I'm going to watch his facial reaction to see any increase in pain. Due to him having no facial expressions, I do not think that this uh, test was positive, and I do think that I do not think there is any peritonitis. The third specialized test I'm going to be performing is a bilateral blood pressure. The reason I want to do this is to rule out an abdominal aortic aneurysm, which will often uh, give a difference in blood pressure between the left and right arm. 20 mill, uh, millimeters of mercury difference would indicate an underlying cardiovascular disease, whereas 40 systolic difference would be in, almost indicative of AAA. So for this procedure, I'm going to apply a blood pressure cuff around your arm. The only risk with this would be that you may get some uh, tension. It may be a little tight uh, with the blood pressure cuff, but it won't last very long. Uh, and if you're having any severe pain, just let me know, okay? okay. It should be short and I'll work as uh, fast as I can. Okay. So I'm just going to apply the cuff around his arm. I'm going to line up the artery mark on the cuff with his AC. And then I'm going to take my stethoscope and I'm going to put that underneath the cuff and I'm going to be listening for his heart rate.
The first plus, uh, blood pressure reading I got was 138 over 82. I will now move to the other arm and see if there are any big differences in the systolic reading. So again, I'm just going to make sure that my patient is still giving me consent for this uh, procedure. It'll be the same as the other arm. Is it still okay if I do this? Yeah, okay. The second blood pressure reading I got was 142 on 84. So due to there not being a large uh, difference between the systolic blood pressure readings, I do not think there is a concern of the aortic aneurysm.